Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jenna Lee and today I'm sharing with you guys some simple, real food from scratch snacks in my farmhouse kitchen. I think snacks should be simple, easy to make and made with real food. Things that are actually going to fill our tummies up and make us feel good. So I'm starting out the day with making some pretty simple little mini pizzas in a muffin tin. I am using the easiest pizza dough recipe that I know of. It's called Easiest Honey Whole Wheat Pizza Dough and it's from one of my favorite cookbooks called Love Real Food by Katherine Taylor. And it comes together really fast in the food processor. You just start out with one cup of very warm water, which expedites the yeast process and a tablespoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of honey, and one envelope of yeast, the rapid rising kind or instant yeast. And you let that sit on the counter while you prepare the other ingredients. You use two and three fourths cup of white whole wheat flour, and one fourth a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Now I just have this beautiful chunk of Parmesan cheese and I'm just chopping it up nice and fine and pouring that right into the food processor. Then you just mix that all up um, until it starts to form a ball. If you need to add a little bit more flour, go ahead and don't forget to add one teaspoon of fine sea salt as well. This would be a great recipe to double up on, or maybe you want to just take a little bit of extra time and quadruple this recipe, um, form them into a ball, wrap them in some saran wrap and put them in the freezer so that you can pull them out on pizza night or for making a quick little lunch or for these little pizza snacks. But this is just a good thing to have on hand. I'm also someone who makes bread every week and if you are in the process of making bread, you have some extra dough, just pull some pieces of dough off of your bread dough, put them in little muffin tins, top them off with some cheese and some pepperoni or ham or a little bit of sun-dried tomatoes and spinach. That would be absolutely delicious. And there you go. You could have your own little mini pizza snacks or a quick and fun lunch. I recommend using a non-stick muffin tin. I was generous with the olive oil and greased up these tins, but these are also a nice non-stick muffin tin from KuiHousewares.com. And if you've been around here, you know that my favorite baking ware is from Kui Housewares. And the reason why they are my favorite is not only because they are a family owned business and I love supporting them, but because they have good quality cookware. Most of the bakeware that you're going to see me cooking with today is from KuiHousewares.com. You can find this muffin tin along with all of my sheet pans and my containers that I hold my sugars and flours in at KuiHousewares.com. If you use my code PIONEER10, you can get 10% off your first order. Well, excuse me while I'm breaking up this giant bag of frozen mozzarella. I try to buy as many things in bulk. Over the years, I've kind of changed my process of grocery shopping. I used to buy lots of big boxes of goldfish and crackers and snacks. And I just find that the grocery prices are so expensive these days that I spend most of my grocery budget on buying foods in bulk and sourcing good quality foods and making as many things as I can from scratch. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have a box of goldfish or some of your favorite easy snacks. There's just some things that I won't make and things like tortilla chips. I always buy tortilla chips. But when you have a bunch of kids and they go through a box of crackers in one sitting, it's nice if you have some recipes that you can whip up and make a lot of. So I put some cheese and pepperoni on top of these pizzas. And now I'm going to make a little dipping sauce with one can of tomato sauce. I'm going to add some Italian seasoning, some garlic powder, salt, and just a little bit of sugar. And let this cook up and simmer on the stove while our little pizzas are cooking. And then they can just, you know, dip their little pizzas in the sauce.
The mini pizzas came out of this nonstick pan like a charm. I also used a little mini muffin tin pan and they didn't come out of that one so well. But I found that I did like when I made the dough a little bit thinner, made them kind of like little thin pizzas and then the dough could go a lot further. So I would recommend making the pizza dough really nice and thin. You could have kind of like these little thin pizza crusts and then you're gonna be able to make a lot more of these pizzas. But overall, the kids thought it was delicious. They thought it was so fun and they really enjoyed dipping them in the pizza sauce as well. So this was definitely a win and I think we're gonna use this for future lunches for sure. The next recipe I'm gonna share with you is something that you can do in five minutes, put it in the fridge and pull it out whenever you want a little dessert or a sweet snack. You're gonna thank me for this one. It is chia pudding. It's so simple. And just remember that it's one cup of liquid to one fourth a cup of chia seeds. And you can use any milk. My favorite is using coconut milk. I only had a can of coconut milk, so I cracked that open and it was more like coconut cream. So I had to add a little bit of milk to it, but it's gonna make it all the more delicious. And then I'm adding Oh, about one fourth to a half a cup of cocoa powder. And about one fourth a cup of honey. I'm stirring that all together and pouring it in little mason jars. And you just need to let this sit in the fridge for at least four hours. And um, then you can pull it out and top it with fruit, berries, bananas, coconut, um, mix some creamy peanut butter in here, top it off with nuts or whipped cream, and it's a healthy version of pudding. And while I was making this, I was remembering those little cups of pudding that my kids always beg me for at the store. They're really inexpensive, but they're just full of nothing and sugar and probably cornstarch. <laughs> and so this is a great alternative and it's something that your kids can whip up or even if you're on a really strict diet, this is something that you could probably get away with using soy milk or any nut milk. And it's absolutely delicious. And it feels like you're having a real treat. For our next recipe, we are going to make sourdough discard crackers. I have made crackers in the past and they were just much too thick. So today I'm determined to be successful. <laughs> I have some sourdough discard that is sitting here on the counter. It was fed yesterday and it's hungry. So that means it needs to be used. So I'm using one cup of sourdough discard and to it I'm adding half a cup of whole wheat flour and half a cup of all purpose flour. I think three tablespoons of olive oil and a little bit of salt, and I'm mixing this dough up until it forms a ball. It's a pretty dry dough, and I even had to add just a splash of water to get it to form a nice ball of dough here. But once you get it all to stick together, you just wrap it into some saran wrap and put it in the fridge or set it on the counter and let that ferment. You can let it sit for at least 30 minutes and then you can use it. The great thing with sourdough is the longer you let it ferment, the richer the flavor and the more that those glutens are digested and it's just really good for your digestive tract. As I'm working around the house and working in the kitchen, for my snacks, I often chop up an apple and dip it in some peanut butter. I also am really fond of making my own trail mixes and just pouring some peanuts or almonds into a bowl with some raisins or cranberries and some chocolate chips and maybe a little bit of pretzels. Um, but that's usually what I'm snacking on as I'm working. So the dough has been in the fridge for about 30 minutes and now I'm gonna pull it out. I'm going to get out some parchment paper um, and I'm also going to get out a silicone mat and see which one works better here. These crackers are going to be pretty rustic and there's not really any rule to them. 
the best advice I can give you is just to roll them out as thin as possible. And so I put a little bit of olive oil here on my silicone mat, and I'm just going to roll it out in a nice long shape along the silicone mat and just get it as thin as I possibly can. And our cracker is going to be nice and crispy. What I love about these rustic sourdough crackers as well is that you can make them any flavor that you want. You could put grated Parmesan right into the dough and kind of make a cheesy cracker, or you could put some spices into the dough. Um, today, I'm just going to rub a little bit of olive oil over the top, um, poke some holes with a fork so we can let some of the air out. And I just couldn't decide at first what kind of spices I wanted to go with. I have poppy seeds, sesame seeds, um, an everything spice mix, kind of like the everything bagel. Um, but I decided to go with garlic powder and rosemary and some sea salt. <laughs> If the spices and such aren't sticking to the top of your dough, I've heard that wetting it down instead of using olive oil um, can work as well. And then just put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. I just kind of stayed close to the oven and watched it. For my second batch of dough, I'm going to keep the spices really simple and repeat all the processes, except I'm only adding a little bit of sea salt. Okay, so here's the deal. I rolled one batch out on a silicone mat and one batch out on the parchment paper. And it was tricky on the parchment paper. The dough was sticking quite a bit. I know you wanna use parchment paper so it doesn't stick and it's easier to transfer, but honestly, using the silicone mat was, was easier. So I'm going to put a link down below for my silicone mat. You can guess where it's from. It's from kuihouseros.com. Um, but I would recommend using a silicone mat for making um, crackers as well. Pull your crackers out when they have a nice golden hue to them. If the crackers feel at all soft or they have a little bit of give, let them cook for a little bit longer or sit in the hot oven. You want them to be nice and crispy. And then let them just sit on the counter and cool for a little bit. These crackers didn't require any scoring or cutting. We're just going to be breaking them and putting them into a jar. You can see that my second batch got a little bit toasty, but honestly, I actually prefer my cookies, all things kind of a little bit crispy. I kind of like that crispy flavor, um, but do it the way that you'd like it. And these were super simple to make. If anything, double the batch, make lots of it because these go fast. For our last recipe, we're gonna make a homemade Z bar or homemade cliff bar. I did make this recipe up a couple years ago and I do have a video for it, but it starts out with one cup of dates. This recipe that I made a couple years ago is doubled today. You start out by soaking them in some warm water for at least 15 minutes so that they can get nice and soft. And we're gonna mix all this up in a food processor or you could use a blender as well. And then we're gonna add it to the dates some honey, about eight tablespoons of honey. If you like it a little bit less sweet, you could probably get away with six tablespoons. Then next add two tablespoons of coconut oil or butter. 
I'm out of coconut at the moment, so I'm using some butter today, but it's gonna make it taste all the better. And then add one cup of oats and blend that all together. It's gonna make sort of a paste. And once that is all mixed together, then you're gonna add one fourth a teaspoon of baking soda to give this a little bit of a lift. Um, about one teaspoon of salt, or maybe it's less than that. I'll put down all the ingredients down below and two teaspoons of cinnamon. This bar is going to taste like an oatmeal iced cookie, so it has that yummy cinnamon flavor, but you could also put a little bit of cocoa powder in here and make this into chocolate, or maybe you wanna add some chopped up peanuts um, and make this a peanut bar. You really could do lots of things with it. And then add another cup of oats, mix it all together um, to just the consistency that you're looking for. I like to leave it with a little bit of oat chunks in there. Um, and then it's ready to go. If you want to make this look just like the Z bars you get from the store, go ahead and follow my first video tutorial where I show you how to make it into the bars. But to expedite the process today, I'm just going to drop some of this dough into my muffin tins and that made this whole process twice as quick. <laughs> it was really quick to put together and much easier putting it in the muffin tins. Um, so they're gonna be just like little round, little granola bars. I'm just greasing the tins with a little bit of butter and then I'm gonna drop these on in here. And this recipe made 12 granola bars with some leftover. You could probably get 14 out of this recipe. And then you're gonna put them in the oven at 350 degrees and it should only take about 10 to 12 minutes. I just like to watch it closely and I pull them out when they look like they're just a little tender in the center. Um, I like these ones a little, a little soft, a little bit moist. They're nice and moist and chewy and sweet and let them completely cool. If you need to put them in the fridge or the freezer, let them completely cool before you pull them out of your tins. And then I'm going to mix together a little glaze for some icing over the top to make them look like an iced oatmeal cookie. And I'm just eyeballing some powdered sugar I'm just gonna put a little bit of water. You want this paste to be quite thick. And then I'm gonna put it in a little Ziploc bag and snip the corner and give it a little icing on top to make it look like the Z bar. I'm just icing in the shape of a Z on top. And there you go. You have these homemade Z bars or homemade cliff bars and you can make them into whatever flavor you want, but it's a pretty simple quick recipe and what I love about it is you can make so much more than what you can get in the box at the store and they taste homemade and fresh they're delicious so I would love to know what some of your favorite homemade snacks are um, let's chat down in the comments below what are some of your favorite things that you like to make in your home maybe we can exchange some recipes here and my kids thought today's video was totally awesome. We had a little snack buffet um, this afternoon, tried out all of the snacks. Um, I boiled up some eggs to add a little bit more protein and this was a really fun day. Thanks for joining me here today. I make a new video every single week on restoring home, family, and spirit um, through tried and true homemaking skills. And I'm so glad you were here today. I'll see you next week. Love you lots.